Hey guys, it's Miss Philly and Loki Pokey Bear. Okay, so I wanted to talk about the garage sale that Daniel and I went to yesterday. So yesterday, Daniel and I went garage sailing and it started out very stormy, very twister, which ironically, I really want to see the Twisters movie in the theater. <laughs> But um, yeah, it started out very stormy and then it, it was kind of like all over the place and everything just kind of worked itself out. But the last garage sale that we went to was a garage sale that we went to the day before, I believe. We went to a garage sale on Friday just by chance because it was on the way. We saw it and we stopped by. But we, when Daniel talked to him, he was like, yeah, come by tomorrow. I'll have more clothing out. We drove on one of the main roads in our city and then it just takes you kind of like out of town. And um, on the way back, we circled around and we happened to hit the garage sale again that we hit on Friday. So we were going through things and I kind of wanted to be a little bit more diligent. I wanted to help Daniel go through the clothing because, you know, he loves clothing, whatever. And there was piles and piles of clothing in garbage bags. So I did like one pile over here and everything was smack dirty. It was dirty. It was smelly. It was stained. But... We don't really let that deter us because it can be washed. It can be, you know, train, uh, stain treated, all that good stuff. <laughs> and then I went, I, I started going through one of the piles of clothing that Daniel went through yesterday. And yesterday he stopped going through that pile because he said it smelled. And I'm like, okay, whatever. Smells don't really bother me. But um, I started going through it and I found a tragically hip t-shirt and then ironically tragically hip was being being played on the radio that's the thing with daniel and i we always find like these weird ass signs like i don't know if i got him into it but i believe in signs and then he we always like notice signs that are like crazy i start digging through it and i find a tragically hip t-shirt the tragically hip was playing on the radio he decided to buy the shirt based on the sign but then i pulled something out and globs of fecal matter come out and at first I thought it was like maybe cat poop dog poop and to me that's not really a big deal that like cat poop and dog poop don't really bother me I don't know I'm just one of those people who aren't bothered too much by that and but then like it when I saw this big log inside of the bag it looked like human poo and to me like i don't know if you guys because i've had animals in the past i've had friends who've had animals and to me human poo smells better i mean smells better smells different than animal poo and it was just ugh, it was so disgusting i this is what happened i pulled the shirt out all this globs of poo come out and i see a log of poo still in the bag and then i look at my hands i'm like <laughs> smelling them and they smell like a really like a faint smell of poop because I was touching the clothing so I don't know if the poo was against the clothing and they touched the clothing and I was just so disgusted that like I literally we, we literally walked out we dropped everything and we walked out of that garage sale and it's like a little long walk because they had like a huge huge driveway but I walked to the to I was like so, I was like Daniel oh my god and then like we went to the car I wasn't touching anything and then I got him to get me some baby wipes I carry baby wipes in my car and then I also carry like 99% antibacterial alcohol started spraying my hands with that shit which there we go <laughs> I, it was yesterday and i still need to spray my hands loki hates uh, sanitizer like he'll go away when i spray it but um yeah and then like and then i'm like daniel clean your hands too like we it was just so gross and then like we're like how could someone like like do you i, I understand if you are I don't know it seemed like it was a house or a property that they acquired or they bought and everything was left there and that they were just selling it as is but that is so disgusting to like sell to the public and then your stuff is covered in poo like who pooed in that bag like i don't understand mind-boggling that's the reason why people who dumpster dive they wear gloves and masks because you don't know what the hell is in that shit you know i guess like we have to be careful in terms of like garage sales like that, where we're kind of digging in things that we don't know what's in it. You know, it doesn't look like anything can look clean, but isn't clean and can be dirty, but could be toxic. Who, who knows, you know? So we really have to be careful, careful in terms of like that. And it was just, I've never experienced something like that where I found like poo in a bag. I mean, I vaguely remember finding poo in a purse at Value Village, I think, or at least that's what I thought it was. I don't know. It was just 
horribly disgusting. I'm prone to touching my face a lot, so um, like who knows if I even touched my face with that poo, you know, with poo particles or poo little, I don't know, micro particles on my hand. You know, Ugh. I don't feel sick though, so that's good. But yeah, that was kind of gross. That was gross, guys. Have you ever got, have you ever been through something like that where it's so not sanitary? Ugh. I don't know. And I've been dumpster diving before a lot and I've never even found poop in like a garbage bag in a dumpster. So, I mean, granted, most poop goes down the toilet. <laughs> we hope anyway. When I started cameras around <clears throat> February, so it's been March, April, May, June, July, five months ago, I started doing cameras and posting cameras online. I could get a lot of money for like basic cameras not like the high-tech or high-end cameras but basic ones but i feel like the basic ones now really kind of struggle especially the ones that are clunky and big the ones that really sell are like the small point and shoot ones so i might do a little bit of a repost of all my clunky ones and maybe price those a little bit cheaper so that i can move those and i tend to not pick those up anymore unless they're the canons which rhubarb slash brass lady um got me she's so like generous she has given me cameras that are super expensive for free or for like literally what she paid which was like five dollars usually but she's giving me a free camera tomorrow so that's very like generous of her that's why i love having friends in the game because they keep an eye out for you and they are you get like the benefits of their generosity and i have that with daniel and i have that with brass lady slash rhubarb vintage if you guys ever want to check her out on Instagram, her name there is Rhubarb Vintage. She has such a beautiful aesthetic, guys. She focuses on, focuses, focuses, no, focuses. Oh my God, I can't even speak. She focuses, focuses, there we go. She focuses on vintage decor. Uh, and I love the way her setup is. And she has a cat that's sometimes in her pictures. It's so cute. But yeah, maybe she, like, if you guys ever see anything there and you're not from Winnipeg or Canada, like, you know, maybe she'll ship it to you guys for the cost of shipping some of them. Some of it is worth it because the cost of her stuff is so reasonable. Like, it's insane. But um, but also support Daniel. You know, Daniel's our BFF, so support him too. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, her stuff is so amazing. Um, I love her decor and sometimes she runs some sales. But yeah, I'll leave her Instagram on the down bar. It's so pretty. She puts a lot of time and effort into it. But um, yeah, so I have like those two peoples in my back pocket, which I'm so appreciative of. So that's why I try to do as much as I can for both of them too. Um, but yeah, so I hope you guys uh, have a little bit more understanding of stuff. Sometimes it's hard to have friends and acquaintances in the game if they're doing the same thing as you because you're literally competing, right? So it's nice to have people in the game that don't do what you do. And, uh, yeah. Rhubarb doesn't do what I do for the most part. She doesn't really do purses. She doesn't really, does not, not do cameras. And doesn't really do women's accessories. Does not do clothing. She just literally focuses on decor. Which is, is cool because that's her, that's what she's passionate about. See, Daniel, even though we are BFFs and, and whatever. He has, um like diversified his portfolio where it's like he which is I don't know if you guys know that but Daniel used to just focus focus on reselling toys that was his thing toys 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 he even drive out of town for toys did not touch clothing did not touch anything else and then he gradually got into like vintage clothing because he was very passionate about you know you know wearing it and it was his style so then he went from toys to vintage clothing and then he just kind of started doing everything he'll do anything he'll <laughs> that sounded bad he'll he is like that one of those resellers that will resell anything that can make him money whether it's clothing electronics toys bath and body purses anything home decor um and that is like the reseller that you need to be slash uh, quote unquote worried about because they touch everything and there's only a few people who are like that daniel is one of them and there's this other guy in our in our city that also does that. Well, he will touch everything. Now, me, I'm kind of below that because I will touch anything that will make me money. But for the most part, sometimes I don't even take the initiative of looking because it doesn't really uh, 
give me that oomph in terms of reselling. So I will sell toys if it's something that I like, but I'm not very knowledgeable in toys. Like I am in a generic general sense where it's like, I know old toys mean money, but not all the time. <clears throat> and sometimes when I've picked up toys in the past, it doesn't sell. I end up like just giving it away or donating it, you know? So like toys, I'm not passionate about, but I will do clothing. Definitely not. But I will do if I, with the knowledge that I have limited knowledge that I have. Um, bath and body stuff I like and knowledgeable in purses I'm interested in and knowledgeable in and passionate about um, cameras I really am I've become somewhat knowledgeable with cameras passionate about it too but yeah so in my terms I'm I will touch anything but nobody got to be worried because I have to be passionate about things in order to or knowledgeable and passionate about things or one or one to resell it so but that's kind of like what you have to do. You kind of have to open your mind to reselling other things because sometimes your specific niche will die down where it's not as sought after. It's not as sellable. It's not making you money. So you have to, and that's why I did cameras because I thought it was interesting and I knew the money was good and the money is way better than purses, except if you go to like the luxury market. So yeah, that's, that story <laughs> i have a question for you guys do you guys have like the resellers that sell whether it's part-time as a hobby whatever do you guys just focus on one niche or do you do anything will you touch anything i'd like to know i feel like i know a lot of you just have your specific niche like even if it's not even if it's a not a specific niche it kind of collectively works its way into one like to me toys and clothing are totally different so like that would be different niches but if you're doing like clothing accessories purses i feel like that's kind of in the same niche but yeah i want i'm really like uh curious to know what you guys sell and if you speak to stick to just one specific uh area of reselling anyway guys that's it for the video i hope you enjoyed it be careful out there and i will see you in the next video i love you bye